All right. Okay. So um, my name is Elijah Chileshe. And before we start, I would actually like to say thank you so much to Dr. Piri for inviting me and enabling me at least give a talk just to explain some of the things that we have been doing as part of the Enterprise Medical Imaging Project in Zambia. All right. So the title of my presentation is Large Scale Analysis of Medical Image Dichometer Data. And the outline of this presentation is as follows. So we we'll simply have an overview of what this particular package was about, which is large scale analysis of uh, medical image metadata. And we'll look at the importance of medical imaging. We'll look at the methodology and the last part being the conclusion. All right, so Zambia, like most countries worldwide, is faced with a shortage of radiologists and as of 2019, it was stated that there were only five trained radiologists working to save a population of 17 million. And the EMI project um, looks into this particular challenge of the shortage of radiologists and tries to explore potential um, enterprise medical imaging techniques that can be implemented to help streamline some of the medical imaging workflows that are currently available. So by investigating the feasibility of implementing efficient systems, this project aims to showcase how enterprise imaging could be used to alleviate some of the significant challenges that are currently being faced um, in the medical imaging sector in Zambia. All right, so I would like to mention that the enterprise uh, medical imaging project actually has about seven work packages, but our main focus is going to be on medical image analysis, which is work package three. And if you look at the link below in the bottom right, this link will then redirect you to the official EMI project website page. All right, so the image that you are seeing right now um, simply displays the current radiological workflow that's followed at the university teaching hospitals. And in order for a patient to have an examination performed, what needs to happen first is that an order first needs to be placed by the referring physician. And once the order has been placed, the order will then be given to the radiographer, sometimes known as the operator. So once this operator receives the order, they will then um, generate the medical image. So by carrying out an examination on the patient. So once the examination has been successfully carried out, a medical image will then be generated. And once that image has been processed, it will then be now uh, interpreted by the radiologist. And once the radiologist interprets that medical image, a report will then be generated. And for work package three, uh, which is large scale analysis of the medical image metadata, our main focus is going to be on the medical images that have been generated after an examination has been performed. All right. so. This work package um, focuses on the exploration of a systematic analysis of medical image metadata using the DICON standard. And as mentioned earlier, this work package is part of a larger project, which is an AMI project. And some of the data that we used during our analysis came in from the university teaching hospitals, as well as Levi Monawasa Hospital. We had a total of about 4.5 million medical images that were generated within the past five years. And the same 4.5 million images is one that we actually used as our data set. And the main focus was for us to assess the DICOM compliance labels. All right, so what is the role of medical imaging in healthcare? So some of the roles of medical imaging in healthcare include enabling accurate diagnosis, as well as providing visual insights into some of the internal structures within the body. So for example, let's say if a person has got a broken hand, once um, a medical, medical imaging examination has been carried out, it will be easy for the radiologist to look at those parts of the image or rather those parts of the body that can't be seen by a naked eye. So for example, if you look at the bones, this uh, medical imaging is going to help us have a look at some of those problematic areas. All right, so regarding the methodology, um, we used the CRISP-DM methodology and I'm sure most of you are aware about this CRISP-DM methodology. 
So CRISP DM simply stands for Cross Industry Standard Process for Data Mining. And to put it in simple terms, um, it's simply a step-by-step -step guide that helps people that are working on a data mining project. The CRISP DM uh, methodology has got six phases. So one of the phases, or rather the first one, is business understanding. So within business understanding, this is where you get to understand the business needs. And this is where you also um, identify how do these, or maybe how do some of these challenges affect the business. Then we also have data understanding on the second phase. So in data understanding, this is where you get to know what kind of data you're working with. All right, so what data are you working with and where is it coming from? The third phase, which is data preparation. Um, this is where we now get to clean the data and organize it so that it's ready for fitting into the models that are created. The fourth stage is the modeling uh, stage. This is where we now get to create the different models. The fifth stage is the evaluation stage. This is where you now get to assess or evaluate the models that have been generated. And once you assess the models that have been generated, you can then specify whether they do uh, fit the business needs. And the last stage being the deployment stage, this is where you now get to um, incorporate those models into the business itself, as well as view the results that have been generated. All right, so when creating these slides, what I did was that I had um, tailored them to include both the methodology that we used as well as the different stages that we used during our analysis. So if we look at the business understanding now in relation to our work package, the objectives include assessing the compliance levels of the DICOM standard through carrying out an analysis on the metadata. Then we also, or rather another objective is for us to automatically classify the medical images. Our focus is on carrying out an analysis on the metadata within the DICOM images. And I'm sure you've been hearing me mention the term DICOM. So what does DICOM stand for? DICOM stands for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine. And this is a universal standard or format that is used for storing medical images, as well as exchanging these medical images between different, uh, different devices. All right, so what is or rather what makes the DICOM standard unique. If we look at the different file formats, we also have PNG, we've got JPG, but in medical imaging, most of the time the DICOM standard is used. And the reason why the DICOM standard is used is because it um, helps the medical personnel to store important patient information within the image itself. So you might find that a medical image will have details to do with the patient's name, patient ID, the operator's name, who was carrying out that examination, who referred that patient, uh, looking at details as well to do with the institution, what department as well. Right, so this image that you're seeing right now um, is an image of an X-ray machine. This is an image of a CT scan. We've got an MRI, as well as an ultrasound machine. So these four uh, machines that I've showed you here all generate DICOM files. All right, so if we go to the next phase, which is data understanding, this is why I mentioned that we need to understand the type of data that we are actually working with. All right, so in our case, we're working with DICOM files, which have got an extension .dcm, and we, our main focus was on extracting the metadata that was found within the DICOM files in order for us to carry out the analysis. The table uh, that's currently being displayed shows some sample DICOM metadata elements that are found within the DICOM files. So the first column that we have here shows the attribute names. So the DICOM files contain details to do with the modality. Was it a CT scan? Was it an X-ray? Um, then if you look at the study description, this simply displays or describes what kind of study, yeah, what kind of study was performed. Then we also have the patient name, we've got the patient ID and the series instance, UID. Then we also have the tag column. So the tag column is one that we are actually using when pulling this information from the DICOM file or when extracting this information. The sample image that um, you are looking at right now, 
shows an example of a DICOM file. So our, we used um, an application called WeAssist to open this medical image. And as you can see, this is a chest X-ray. So we can see some of this information that is being displayed. We can see the patient information. We can see the station details, the study details, the series details as well. All right, so during the data preparation stage, this is where I now get to clean the data and organize it so that it's in a form that can be used to feed into the models that have been created. And so what we had to do was extract, or rather um, remove the corrupted data and standardize the data so that it's in one format or a standardized format. And then we also had to choose specific DICOM elements that we were supposed to use for the analysis. I would like to mention as well that the DICOM standard itself um, has got 5,000 plus DICOM, uh, DICOM metadata elements, but our analysis was on the fields that are entered by the operator when an examination is being carried out. All right, so this image um, simply displays some sample information. So as you can see, in 2020 July, we had about 3.2 gigabytes worth of information. In 2021, we had about 180 MB and 6.5 GB. But this is just some sample data, but what the information that we used, or the data set that we had, had about 4.5, uh, terabytes worth of information. And so still during the data preparation stage, we also had to go through the process of digitalizing some medical images. So once medical images have been generated uh, by the operator, these images are then stored on CDs. So once these images have been stored on CDs, uh, what we had to do was simply obtain these CDs and then copy all the DICOM files that were stored on these CDs, put them on an external hard drive to make it easier for us to have access to the medical images. Then if we move on to the modeling stage, this is where we now get to implement the algorithms that were supposed to be used to carry out an analysis on the DICOM metadata. And some of the techniques that we used include that, um, exploratory data analysis. So we just wanted to gain a firm understanding on the type of data that we're working with. And some of the tools that we used um, when coming up with these algorithms include Python, as well as Jupyter Notebooks. On the evaluation phase, um, this is where we now go to measure the compliance levels based on the selected DICOM, uh, the DICOM elements that we had selected. And we also had to verify the analysis and accuracy. We had to verify the analysis on the accuracy and reliability of the model that we had implemented. And the last stage being the deployment stage, this is where we now got to visualize our findings and see whether the model was working as it was supposed to work. And based on the information that we found, this information is able to actually help us come up with guidelines that are supposed to be used um, when specifying important information that should be entered by the radiographers when generating the medical images. Right, so the image that you're seeing right now shows the results um, that was generated after carrying out the analysis. So the bars that you're seeing in blue show that those fields were not missing, while the ones in red show that those values were missing from the now, uh, the data set that we had. So in the y-axis, you can see the different DICOM metadata fields. So which is the study date, we've got the modality, we've got the patient sex, we've got the patient age and the rest. So from this, um, so from these results, we can actually see that the compliance levels are regarding the DICOM standard at the university teaching hospitals are quite low. All right, and so in conclusion, now, um, this study simply focused on conducting a systematic analysis of the DICOM metadata. So while looking at the level of DICOM compliance, so by carrying out an analysis, we're able to now identify whether the radiology department um, focuses or are they compliant with the DICOM standard. And based on this information, we're able to now generate the uh, necessary documentation needed in order for 
the compliance levels to be at least increased compared to what we currently have. All right, thank you. Uh, this is the end of my presentation.